Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott, and in today's session we're looking at the sea shack scene, and in particular how we're going to animate the flag. So I have a very basic flag animation here. There's lots of different ways you can do this, but I thought the best way would be to introduce bones and how you use bones to rig objects, because it's the basics of character animation and you can do all sorts of things with bones. If you want a complex flag animation, then look up cloth simulation combined with wind. But I think for beginners, it's far more beneficial to learn about bones and parenting, as these can give you a far more fundamental understanding of animation. Do remember, I have a course on animation for beginners, and I'll try and remember to put a card in the corner now. Also remember, this is a beginner's session, so I'm not going into any advanced techniques. I'm not going to spend too long on the animation, just to give you the ideas so you can go away and try it yourself. So I'll go back to the basic layout and start afresh. And remember my shortcut keys are down the bottom here. Don't worry if your timeline looks different to mine. We'll go through these things shortly. So I've already got my 3D cursor near my flag. I'll just very quickly recreate a flag. So Shift A, add a plane, mesh a plane, rotate it by the X so it's pointing at us, and then just scale it accordingly. So I'll scale in the X and slightly in the Z. I'll actually go to front view and move it into position roughly, somewhere around there. Now it's important to remember I have scaled this and moved it and rotated it. So just a quick look at our items. The scale is not uniform, the rotation is off. Now the rotation and the scale will affect your bones and how they react to your object, or at least they can do. So control A to set that or apply that, and you've got an option rotation and scale here. So we'll apply our scale, we'll go into edit mode, and that way we won't have any issues when we try and parent this object to the bones. So I'll go into edit mode with tab, I'll zoom in on my object with full stop on my numpad or period key if you're American, and control R to set some loop cuts. I'll do about that many. Use your wheel to increase the number, or you can just type it in, and double click to set. I'll set two across the middle as well, in case you want to do some there as well. Now I needed to do that because the bones will affect these points and move these points around. So if I had no loop cuts and none of this internal topology, then the bones would only be able to move the very far corners and it wouldn't look like a flag. The more faces, vertices or edges you have, the more like a flag it's going to be. So let's go back into object mode. Shift right click around here where we're gonna put our bone. So Shift A and the bones are under armature. Click on that and it creates a bone for you. So if you've looked at my animation course, you'll know a bit about these. But very briefly, they have three modes, object mode, edit mode, and pose mode. Object mode is the same as any object, you can move it around and rotate it and things. Edit mode is where we can actually change how many bones we have, and pose mode is actually moving them about and animating them. I'm going to go to edit mode to create my armature first. So into edit mode, and now I can select the middle of my bone or either end. So I'm just going to grab the end of my bone, press G, and then move it into position. Now it would be nice to know where my cuts are along this object, and then I can line my bones up accordingly, and then each bone can affect a different set of vertices. Well, let's go into object mode, choose that object, across into the object menu, and down into viewport display. Then we can click on wireframe, then we can actually see the vertices. Now I can click on my bone, go back into edit mode, and line these up with our vertices by pressing G to grab. To create a new bone, I can just press E to extrude this one, and I might as well constrain it to the X axis, so E then X. And do that all the way along, E then X. Now my animation is going to be nice and simple, it's just going to be flapping in the wind. But you may choose to have a more detailed armature, so one coming out here and here, and then you'll be able to modify these vertices a bit more as well. I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to keep everything fairly simple. So now we have a very simple sort of skeleton or armature as it's known. I'm going to go into pose mode and show you how this works. So here's pose mode. And at this point, it's important to explain the idea of parents and parenting. So basically this is our starting bone and therefore it's the main parent. Then we have a child of that parent, this one here. So if I move this bone, it moves that one as well. If I move this bone, the first one doesn't move, but it does move all its children. And a good way I've heard 
of describing this is a parent mother that's pregnant with a baby. Whenever she moves, the baby obviously moves with her, but the baby can move inside the womb independently and kick and whatever. And of course that gets odd when you think about babies inside babies. But still, I think it's a good analogy. I can select all my bones at any point and press Alt-R to remove any rotation or Alt-G to remove any movement. Alt is often the remove command of any major command, like R to rotate and Alt-R to remove the rotation. Anyway, we want to assign the flag to these bones so when we move the bones, the flag moves as well. So I have to make sure I'm in object mode and then I can select my flag. And then lastly, select the armature. And remember, whatever you select last, that's the active object and you can tell by its yellow outline. Therefore, we're parenting whatever we've selected previously to this active object, which is the armature. And you can have multiple objects attached to one armature if you wanted to. Anyway, we press Control P for parent and there's an option then with automatic weights. Now, if you don't see that, you may have selected it in the wrong order. So I'm going to press with automatic weights and it should be clever enough to know that I want these vertices with this bone and these with this one and so on. And in fact, this one will slightly affect these ones over here as well. So it's now parented together. So let's check that that's worked. I'll select my bones, go to pose mode and move the first one. And we can see that they're all having some sort of effect. But interestingly, this one seems to be having the same effect as this one. In fact, this one here doesn't have much effect at all. It's only because it's moving that one as a child that it's actually affecting the flag. So something's gone wrong with my weights and this can be very frustrating. So I think it's important for me to just explain a bit about that. I can select all my bones and Alt R once again to reset their rotations. And in order to weight paint, I need to have my bones in pose mode and select my flag in object mode. And I can't do that. It seems to want to keep my bones selected. The reason for that, and it's a bit of a pain, but it's to do with being able to edit multiple objects at the same time. You have to go up to edit lock object modes and make sure that's unticked. Now I can have my bones selected in pose mode and let's just select one like the end one here and just try and remember that's the one you've got selected. Now select my flag and I can select it and it's in object mode, but my bones are actually still in pose mode. It will make sense in a second because now I'm going to go to weight painting and you can see the flag has changed color and this bone has been selected and I can select the different bones and see the influence they have on my flag through the colors. And you'll notice for some reason, these bones didn't have any influence. I think it just may be the way I've lined up my bones and you're probably going to get a similar scenario if you line your bones up like this. Not to worry because we can edit that quite easily. Let's click on the end one to start with. And we can see that the red is where it has most effect and the blue is where it has least. And I can actually rotate that bone still by pressing R and see the effect that it has and see where it has hardly any influence. Right click to cancel that or control Z to undo. So what I need to do is to be able to paint the weights off the end here and make this all blue so it only affects the end. In order to do that, we go to our active tool and workspace settings up here and we can start drawing. So I'll put the weight to zero and I'll paint across here all the way to roughly around here. Now when I press rotate, it only affects the end and a little bit of the vertices next to it. It's worth remembering actually, it is affecting the vertices, not the edges. So think about the points that you're affecting rather than the edges you're affecting. Let's click on the next bone and to select the bone, you press control left click and you can select the next bone. And I can't paint with zero weight. I need to paint with 100% weight. Paint down the middle there. Now when I press rotate, that's having some influence. We don't have to be too accurate in this case. Next one along, control left click, paint along there, control left click, paint along there. And we can see that this one has lots of influence. So let's get rid of the influence where it shouldn't be with zero. In fact, let's just paint the whole thing zero like that and then go back to one and just paint down there like that. And the last one, control left click, change it to zero, get rid of all of it. Change it to one, paint down there. Now let's see how we got on. We can control click any of our bones and test it out. Great, it's working. So that's a really quick guide to weight painting. 
Don't panic too much if that's not making sense. You can kind of get away with the bones not quite working in places. And this one just happened to be a particularly bad automatic weight painting example. So most of the time this will work for you pretty well. But just be aware that you might need to go into weight painting and it's an important part of learning about animation. So we need to animate our flag. Let's go back to object mode with our flag, select our bones and into pose mode. We can now put the lock object modes tick back on. That may cause problems later. At least remember that you have unticked it because it's on by default. So do watch out for that. So let's select all my bones and Alt R to reset the rotation. Now let's do some simple animation. I'm just going to quickly go into object mode, select these and hide them so they're out of the way. So H for hide and back to our bones and put them in pose mode. So let's animate our flag. Let's go to frame zero to start off with and let's go to top view with seven on our numpad. That way it's just going to flap across here and back again. Nice simple animation. So from frame zero, select our first one and just rotate that really slightly and select each of them and rotate them slightly. Now in order to set a keyframe, we need to make sure all are selected and then press I to set a rotation keyframe. Make sure you don't just have the last one selected and press I to set a keyframe because you won't have set it for the other ones. That's a common mistake. A much easier way is just to press the record button down here. But do remember you've pressed it because anything you move now, it will record keyframes for you. Not just the bones here, but any objects that are moved and so on. And that's another common problem that people have recorded all their movements. So remember you've pressed it. So what I'm going to do is have a quick loop of maybe 40 frames where it flaps from side to side and back again, and then just copy that loop along to 250 frames. So in order to have a loop, I've got to copy the first keyframe and put it at the end. Let's do that quickly. Shift D to duplicate, move it across to 40, and I've now got two keyframes. And it all looks okay, but I've done exactly the mistake that lots of beginners make. I didn't select them all and select all the keyframes. And you can see them all down here. And if I extend this out, you can see all the keyframes and only the end bone, bone six, has been selected and added a keyframe to. If you can't see the armature, by the way, just click on the summary arrow there. So I need to select all my bones first and then copy the keyframes. So this time, selecting them all here, or what's even easier, if I deselect all by pressing Alt A, is just clicking the top one will select all the ones below. So the summary one will select all the ones below. Shift D to duplicate and move it across to frame 40. Now we know the start and the end of our loop. So we need the middle. Let's go to frame 20 and move it across to the other side where it's flapping to. And just selecting all and rotating a little bit. So now here's our flag. Pretty simple. And what I'm going to do is set my end frame to 40 just for now. So we can see the loop if I press spacebar a pretty ordinary looking flapping flag. Now I'm not going to go into detail about animation at the moment, but I suggest you look up things like follow through and overlapping action and you'll get a better flag movement. But for now, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. But what I will do is just quickly show you how you can loop this to the end. So we'll change our end to 250, which is the end of my circular camera movement. Make sure I've got all my bones selected and then select all my keyframes. I can now press Shift D to duplicate and move them across so that the beginning ones overlap the end ones. They're exactly the same, so they're writing over the end ones, but that doesn't matter because they're the same. This time I'll do it a different way. We can select all, have our playhead on frame 80, Control C will copy all the keyframes, and Control V will paste the keyframes from the playhead. So I can do the same here, frame 60, Control V. I notice my loop only goes to 240. Well, we can select all, put my playhead at frame zero and press S to scale and scale it up so it goes to frame 50 and it will loop nicely. Let's just click on the end and it loops nicely. Okay, so that's the very basics of using bones to animate. And I know there's a lot better ways to do this particular thing, but I do want to introduce people at this stage to bones because they're so essential to learn for character animation and all sorts of things. So your homework is to try and do the same thing on the fish. So it's a very similar sort of movement. 
The only difficulty you might have is once you've animated the fish waving like a flag, is to actually move that object from one place to another, so as if they're swimming through the sea. And I will explain more about that in the next session. I'll give you a hint, think about parenting, and maybe parenting your bones to another object, and moving that object. But see how you get on, you will learn more if you've had a go, and then you can see what I do next time, and it may suddenly make more sense. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.